Yeah. It's for all. Uh, get with it. Time to learn about biological pigments. Color the compounds produced by metabolism. These molecules bands get light from the visible region of the spectrum that we all love and know. Considering since IR has been used in topic 11 and topic 4. And as you all probably know, the color that we see is opposite to the one absorbed. For example, if a pigment appears to be the color green, then the color that was absorbed was red. You know what I mean? Pigments absorb light due to their chemical bonds. They're highly conjugated, meaning their electrons in P orbitals are delocalized. So these loosely held electrons can become excited and absorb certain wavelengths of energy. The molecule responsible for absorbing radiation is called the chromophore. Now let's look at other types of biopigments. Yeah, let's go. First things first, let's start off with pore friends. Some examples include chlorophyll and hemoglobin. Their structure contains four heterocyclic rings, all which contain carbon and nitrogen. Carbon atom bridges happen to connect the whole thing. Did I mention the ring could also act as a ligand? They form shellate with metal to covalent bonds. Enough about pore friends though, let's keep moving this song along. Let's take a deep dive into chlorophyll. There are many different types, but it always will contain magnesium, cause if it doesn't, it's deficient, which causes leaves to lose their color. Uh oh, insufficient. My man's chlorophyll is the primary pigment. Photosynthesis, a process that you're all familiar with, in which chlorophyll undergoes a redox change. Don't worry, H2O helps it get back to its original state. Another thing I should mention is accessory pigments, which are photosynthetic and harvest light in different parts of the spectrum and pass energy to chlorophyll, which absorbs the blue, not red. Yeah, that's the deal. Up next, I'm gonna explain the oxygen carrying team made up of myo and hemoglobin. Man, that's a dream. They both belong to what is called an eme group, containing iron and two plus eight. That's the scoop. Up first, hemoglobin with four in groups. That's my main. Each bond with a polypeptide chain. On the other hand, is our buddy myoglobin with only one heme group and single polypeptide chain. These two work together. Hemo carries O2 in the blood. Myoglobin stores it in the muscles, and that's what's up. Both get oxygenated. We bond with the iron atom, rosetine, and both oxyhemo and oxymyoglobin. The binding of emo to oxy is cooperative, meaning the ability to bind increases with an extra oxygen. This results in a sigmoidograph, yeah, S shaped, which makes the other one receptive. It's called the allosteric effect. Okay, that's enough time for a different zone. Let's move on to my other friend, the cytochrome, which are varied groups of protein molecules that also contain heme groups. That's cool. Found in reverend, yeah, electron transport. They go through redox reactions for sure. The iron atoms are unlike the ones of the oxygen team because their oxidation state is prone to both two and three. And electrons are gained through the terminal acceptor, which is known to make cyanide. Be careful. Now let's move on. Come on, let's make some noise. Give it up for the next pigment, carotenoids which are pigments containing super long hydrocarbon chains with many double bonds. They range in color, yellow to red, and are fat soluble cause a nonpolar hydrocarbon chain makes it all possible. Overall, carotenoids are super phenomenal. Now it's time for exa examples cause we're unstoppable. Beta carotene is commonly found. It's located in veggies and fruits all around. It absorbs blue-violet light the most, appearing to be orange. Why wow, that's tight. Both alpha, beta, carotene provide vitamin A, so if you want good vision, eat a carrot every day. 
They also act as antioxidants because of their double bonds, which are made up of carbon, aligned for oxidation. However, when oxidized, they lose tone and gain a weird scent. In addition, vitamin A activity ends under oxytransketonins becomes cis isomers. Don't worry though, cause it can be reduced with less light and exposure. Up next, my homie, we are really good friends. Who goes by the name Anthocyanin? They're a widely distributed group of pigments responsible for most plant colors like blue, red, or pink. They're aromatic compounds with the three ring structure. Conjugated double bonds help them stay strong for sure. Soluble in water, yet yeah, polar hydroxyl groups. They hang in aqueous cells rather than a tough membrane. Oof, they're formed by a reaction with sugars and proteins. That's right, and it all occurs with the presence of light. They're used as pH indicators due to the transfer of H plus ions from OH groups altering conjugation. Along with that, they can form color coordinated complexes with Fe3 plus Af3 plus you know ions. We've seen to finally reach the end. I guess it's time to discuss the analysis. Of pigments. It's done by two main types of something that is called chromatography. One is called paper chromatography, the other is called thin layer chromatography. So at the end of the day, scientists prefer far more because it is more efficient, it is easily reproducible, and has better results. Thank you for listening to my song. There are notes on Google Docs.